Born in the year of the elephant, even as a child, he was special. It was evident. Birth of the Prophet mentioned in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18:18. That's your reference. Perfectly proportioned, the most handsome, most elegant, impeccable character, the most humble and intelligent, compassionate, considerate in speech. He's most eloquent even before he was a prophet. He was a man of great eminence. He's ranked number one in Michael Hart's book, Most Influential. Please refer to the book Sahadith if you need to check his credentials. His messages, worshipping Allah alone is essential and the Quran and his teachings make up all our fundamentals. On the day of judgment, we rely on Allah's mercy and his intercession. His words, pearls of wisdom teaching us valuable lessons. Liberator women's rights, he was against all oppression. The English language can't do justice, forgive me for my indiscretions. His face is more radiant than the full moon and his sweat smelt better than the most expensive perfume. When his enemies knew him as a Sadiq al Amin. They tried to assassinate his character when he spread the message of Tawheed. He invited everybody to Sirat al Mustaqim, but most rejected his message and they didn't take heed. Every step he'd take was for Allah and his deen. Allah split the moon for the Quraysh, yet they still didn't believe. In fact, they tortured the believers where a hurried sight it must have been, but imagine the status in Jannah of the earlier Shaheed. They called him a liar, a soothsayer, a madman and a magician. They couldn't swallow their pride and let go of their traditions, offered him power, wealth and women to stop spreading the religion. But he said, even if you offer me the sun and the moon, I won't accept your proposition. The greatest calamities when he departed is dunya. We show our love for the beloved by following his sunnah. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, we get to drink from his blessed hand. 21st century role model. He's not just your average 7th century man. There's absolutely nothing ISIS is doing, the Islamic State is doing, that Muhammad didn't do, right? I, I, mean, I think I said, good luck finding something significant, that, that some difference between them. I mean, to taking sex slaves, right? Muhammad took sex slaves and gave sex slaves to his, his generals. It was totally kosher. It's a kosher thing to do. If you're going to follow the example of it's Muhammad... It's definitely not kosher. Yeah, no, but it, it, halal. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going, if you're going to follow Muhammad's example, which is a real, is is perhaps the main lens through which you have to look at this. I mean, the, 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 there's the, that's just what's in the Quran, and there's what's in the Hadith, the larger literature, and there's the example of Muhammad, which is which is attested to in in both those literatures and in in bi the early biographies about him. Muhammad was not like the Buddha. He was not like Jesus. He was not like he was not a, he was. He was a conquering warlord who succeeded, right? And that is an example that is very different from the example of a guy who got crucified or the example of a guy who spent his life meditating and then teaching, right? If, if the Buddha had been lopping heads off, you know, at every sermon and advocating, just talking endlessly about um, when to kill people and how many people to kill and, you know, how many sex how to treat your sex slaves... If that was if that was just strewn throughout the Buddhist teaching, I would expect Buddhists to behave exactly the way we see members of ISIS and Al Qaeda and Al Shabaab and Boko Haram behave. May Allah reunite us with them in Jannah and save us all from the fire of Jahannam. We love Him more than our own selves, Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam.